Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and joining me is Jason Dustel from Meridio. And today we're gonna to be talking about ways to improve the video quality of your flat panel or projector in basically five easy steps. So Jason, how are you? Fantastic, Phil. Great to hear your uh, voice and see your face and I hope your holiday season so far has been really fun. So before we get started, we always want to thank Meridio and AV Pro for helping us put on our year-end projection summit where we talk about all things dealing with projection. But today, we're going to be talking about Meridio. So Jason, can you give me a little history about Meridio for those who do not know who the company is? Yeah, so the origins of Meridio actually go back uh, 30 years. Um, our, uh, our CEO, Jeff Murray, has been in the industry for a long time. Uh, has lots of friends, knows lots of people, and um, his background was communications with the Army. And um, after that, um, he uh, ended up working for a company called Sencor, which was based out of South Dakota, and Sencor was super famous for making test equipment. So between Jeff Murray and um, another uh, uh, one of my coworkers, his name's Lowell, they spent 20 years with Sencor, and they said, you know, let's see if we can do this ourselves. So the birth of AV Pro was actually the little Meridio um, uh, 4K 6G signal generator, which I know, Phil, you've used that thing a ton. But that has been uh, kind of the go-to for every calibrator on the planet. So it's a great little generator, easy to use. And from there, that really, uh, that was the, the snowball effect. So after we made the generator, we made the analyzer. Um, you know, if you do test equipment, doing video distribution um, isn't as tough as, as one would think if you go the other way around. Uh, when you're building test equipment, you really have to understand how HDMI works. And we got a good handle on it. And um, that led us down, oh, well, if we can do test equipment, let's do an extender. Oh, well, if we can do an extender, let's see if we can do a matrix switch. So uh, we are going on 10 or 11 years. Um, and that was really the birth of the company was, was test equipment and calibration and making projectors and TVs look good and look correct for the environment they're in. So Jason and I have talked in detail in previous sessions about all of the different test pattern generators and analyzers. Their tools are incredibly useful. But today, we're gonna to be talking about just simple tips that you guys can do, utilizing basically free test patterns that are available on the Meridio site to get a better looking picture. Because one of the things I hate is going over someone's house, Jason, to watch a football game, like, and the, the uniform is not the right color. I'm walking in there with my SC jersey on, and what I'm wearing on my sh back is not what I'm seeing on the screen. Phil, and me being a idiot, it drives me crazy. We're so passionate about picture quality, especially on the Meridio side. We didn't feel like that picture quality and, and a good image should only be reserved for um, the, the calibrators and the, and the end users who really understand calibration and they really want their systems to be performing correctly. So if you're not a calibrator and you're not an installer, well, we also want to take care of the, the end user too. So if you go to meridio.com, you can download tons and tons and tons of test patterns for free that you could burn to a disc or put on a thumb drive and get your own TV set up at home without maybe having to hire a, a professional calibrator and spend 500 bucks. Exactly. And you also have them on your YouTube site, the Meridio YouTube site. So if I need one of those patterns, they're quickly available on that site yep. as well. So let's talk yep. about some you of the things it. you can quickly do. The first thing we should be doing to these projectors out of the box is a firmware update. I cannot tell you <laughs> how, many, how many systems I run into. And um, I'll just use JVC as an example. Uh, mm -hmm. JVC released firmware for their projectors um, last year, uh, just mm -hmm. in time for the projector shootout up at Value. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that firmware on the JVC projector did some really cool stuff with HDR and with tone mapping. So um, whether it's manufacturers, Sony, JVC, Epson, BenQ, you know, I know you do a lot of ultra short throws, mm -hmm. make sure the firmware is up to date out of the box. Now once the projector is installed correctly, uh, there's a few steps you can do right out of the box. Number one, get it out of the factory picture mode. Projectors have been a little better at this recently compared to flat panel TVs. Um, but you know, you don't want to be using energy savings modes or vivid or dynamic or any of these modes. They just absolutely trash the picture. So a good first step for most people, after the firmware is up to date, after the projector is mounted correctly uh, in comparison to the screen, um, then uh, we want to pick a better picture mode. Okay, picture so let's mode, talk about that. Mode, picture the mode. quickest way to do that. Yep. So one of the patterns that I, there's two patterns that I would say you should try. 
Um, one of them is the one I call it the kids, where it's the one where you actually oh, the family have portrait. The, the family portrait. So it's a it's a yeah. bunch of different people or young people with different skin tones and different shirts on and everything else. And you and it's funny. There's a reason why they wear those different types of shirts. There's a reason yeah. why it is that t- different. There's those different types of skin tones, sure. and there's a reason why their that background is gray. It's supposed to look like the real world, not cool. Because a lot of times people go, man, that looks really cool. No, which mode makes these people yeah. look like real human beings? What you don't want to do is pick a p- preset picture mode that locks you out of all the settings. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I like to tell people is find a picture mode that actually has the adjustments that you want to make. Mm-hmm. So after you pick that picture mode, um, then I can start looking at things like color temperature. So if you are using a, a movie mode or cinema mode or filmmaker mode, you might want to take a look at a grayscale test pattern or even a black and white photo and make sure that the grayscale or the, or the grays aren't like a bluish gray, a greenish gray, or a pinkish gray. And that's usually what you'll toggle with the color temperature setting in the TV mm-hmm. or the projector. So you'll see like warm one, warm two, cool, medium, neutral, yada, yada, yada. So pick a picture mode that gives you the most adjustments then look at a grayscale or black and white image and pick a color temperature that's closest to looking realistic. And you can do that, like you said too, Phil, with the, uh, we always call them the Saved by the Bell kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a, that's a free download from the website also. So the website, you can download these technical mm-hmm. test patterns, but you can mm-hmm. also download some practical image too to get this stuff right. So yeah. firmware, get it lined up correctly, pick a picture mode, pick a color temperature. Okay. So let's so yeah. So let's go back real quick. You you mentioned that I'm glad you brought up that whole thing about sometimes you the, you pick a mode that looks good but you can't adjust it. it happens all the time with projectors, by the way. Right. Um, a lot of Total times, you, uh, better projectors if you um, whether it's a big Sony JVCs, a lot of the better um, laser TVs, you can adjust color temperature and, and stuff totally. by picture modes. Some of them yep. you can only do the user. <laughs> Right, you go. Wow, the movie looks good, but when I go in the movie, there's no brightness, contrast, color temperature, nothing. Only way I get that is under user. Well, guess what? That's yeah. the mode that you pick. All right, well, and I, then from there, I, then you go in and play with your your color temperature and stuff like that. Sure. And I use actually both patterns. The first thing is, if there is two or three modes that can be adjusted, mm-hmm. I I say which is the best starting point. And sometimes it may be well, filmmaker mode movie dark, movie light mode, filmmaker mode, or user mode. I go, wow, all three of those, all four of those can be adjusted. While between, of those four, I think it looks like to my eye that, you know, theater mode night looks the best, right? Sure. And I use two things. I use the kids, and then like you yep. said, I use the grayscale. Because yep. the first thing is, the kids look more realistic to me. Real, not sure. cool. There's reference and preference. Which and one looks orange. like a real human being, not a cartoon, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Then I bring up that grayscale, and you can see like the grayscale pattern you guys have that has the mm-hmm. from black all the way up to white, and those sure. should all be gray. If you look at them, and it right. goes gray, gray, green, 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 wrong mode. Gray, not gray, so green, blue, blue, wrong mode. Yeah. And I and I right. look at it and say, which one are all of those things actually gray? Not bluish. Right. People think blue is white. No. Which one looks like white? Sometimes you got to hold a piece of paper and look at a piece of paper and then look at the picture. Yeah. Because you get so people are so used to looking at bluish stuff that they don't know that it's white. And then, yeah. and then now I go, this is the right mode. And then I play with the color temperatures to say which one of those color temperatures look best in that particular one. If you look at the CIE chart and you draw a straight line from blue over to yellow, it goes right through white. So when you're tuning a TV that's too blue or a projector that's too blue, um, you are creeping towards the middle of the CIE chart, and if you kept going, you would you would hit a dead wall into yellow. So a lot of people, when they get it mm-hmm. out of these super cool bluish picture modes and color temperature settings, they go, man, it looks kind of yellow to me. It, I don't like it. Um, just give your eyes a little bit of time to rest and a little bit of time to get used to it. Uh, give it a couple days because I can promise you if you go back to the cool color temperature, everything's going to look really harsh, and that warmness of the image goes away. Skin tones look a little pasty and stuff. So... Um, if you do find a color temperature that looks good on gray, um, look at a practical image as well. That's why we have those on the radio website. So don't be surprised if it might look a little yellow if you're used to blue, but trust me, just give your eyes time to uh, acclimate to that. Exactly. So pick a picture, um, firmware update, line to screen, pick a picture mode that can be adjusted, 
um, use the use the um, as you said the Save by the Bell kids and a grayscale chart yep. and the CIE yep. chart to try to pick the best color temperature. The next thing you can Correct. do is you can work on making sure that you, that you get the best black levels, and that's where right. um, brightness comes in. So the funny thing is, you would think they would call it black level, not brightness, but they actually call it yeah. brightness. So how would I adjust my brightness on my projector? So, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll see a TV that says brightness or a projector that says brightness. Most of the time that's actually your black level. Unless it's a Sony flat panel, mm -hmm. then brightness actually does make the TV brighter. Uh, but traditionally, brightness is your black level pattern. So when you're looking at a test pattern on the screen, and of course you're gonna wanna verify this with, it, with an image, uh, but when you're setting the black level on the display, you want to make sure that black is as black as possible, but you can also see the shades of gray just above black. So the infamous example is Game of Thrones, and if the black level is set too mm -hmm. low, you know, you might get this inky black and this huge contrast ratio, mm -hmm. but that doesn't help us if you can't see the shadows in, the, in, the, in, the, in this case, the TV show, and you can't see the zombies mm -hmm. getting their head chopped off and stuff like that. Um, if you go the opposite way and the black level is too high, all your stuff that's dark gray and black looks washed out and, and light gray. So you completely ruin the contrast of the display by leaving the black level too high and you kill your shadows if you leave the black level too low. So there's a fine balance between the two. So if you download the test pattern mm -hmm. on the Meridi website, follow the instructions, and then have some sort of reference image. Maybe you have a black and white image that you were using to use color, to, to judge color temperature. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, then toss in a movie with uh, a lot of dark detail, Batman or something like that, and just make sure you can see all your shadows. So look at it with the test pattern, verify it with something real, and your black level set correctly. Exactly. So the goal is the goal is to make the blacks as black as possible without crushing all of the stuff in the shadows. So yep. if you exactly. have a men in black, that you should be the the suits should look black, but you should be able totally. to see the collar and the wrinkles and all the and the pockets and Great. all that stuff on on the actual suit. The next one is a lot of times to make the projector look brighter the highlights get clipped. And that right. not, not, that happens a lot in HDR, but it also happens in SDR. So that is where right. contrast comes in, correct? Yeah, the, the contrast is the opposite of the brightness. Uh, that's your white level. So um, how bright is the brightest white uh, uh, visible on the screen? And test patterns are a dead giveaway for this. And just like your example, Phil, with uh, looking at uh, Men in Black, we can have the same problems on the bright side of the grayscale too. So if the contrast is set too high, you, you do what's called clipping and you lose white detail in a guy in a white shirt or clouds in the sky or, you know, you're watching like planet Earth and, you know, there's a scene where there's, you know, some polar bears going down the snow and you want to see all that detail. Um, but you also can't set it too low because you end up with the same problem as setting your black level too high and you're hurting the contrast. So if you're looking at the test pattern, you're turning the contrast down. Um, and you can see everything you're supposed to see, don't turn it down any further than that. You're going to end up losing dynamic range and losing contrast, which is the most important part of the image to our eyeballs is contrast. So if you don't get the black level and white level correct, you're starting off in a bad place. So don't set yourself up for failure. Set yourself up for success. Make sure your black level is set correctly. Make sure your contrast is set correctly. And the last few things that we'll talk about, Phil, is... Um, is uh, just a few minor touch-ups with the rest of the controls in the regular menu. But, man, getting the black level and white level correct is so important. That's mm -hmm. most of it, to be honest. Yeah, and if you look at the patterns, it's basically it's little blocks on the uh, black level one for adjusting brightness. There's some certain blocks below you don't want to see. And then if you look at the contrast pattern, you want to see as many of the blocks as possible, but there's a sure. minimum that you want to see because anything above that is just... Yep extra extra credit basically all right first i don't like going to someone's house and seeing a sports jersey not look right the other thing i can't stand yep. is bad motion where there's either it's motion horrible. artifacts the videos yep. like to call it soap opera effect where you actually are watching something and it just doesn't look cinematic phil that you exactly correct what you just mentioned is the motion some people like it some people hate it the purists hate it but there might be some cases where you like it. And sports is the number one example. Mm -hmm. So how would you adjust motion on one of these projectors? So what's actually happening under the hood is you have a, 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 a movie or TV show, sports, whatever. And uh, if it's a movie, it's most likely shot at 24 frames per second. Unless you're Ang Lee, you might shoot a couple movies at 60. But if you're 24 frames per second, 
um, and the camera pans up, down, left, right, uh, might look a little juddery, right? And, and people don't like that. So you can turn on the motion interpolation. Some call it true motion, some call it motion flow. There's a million different names for it. Manufacturers do whatever they want. Um, it might smooth out some of that motion. But then you watch something else that might look really bad. So there is a right and there is a wrong, and then there's a preference too. Um, typically, the right mm -hmm. way to do it is to set it very, very, very low, if not off. And that's going to eliminate any artifacts that you see from motion being fake, essentially. It's made up. So it's like, what's, what's more worth it to you? Do you want to see the movie as it was shot and just deal with that cinematic look, which most of us do. We're all used to 24 frames per second. Or do we crank up the motion a little bit and um, kind of help out with that judder from 24 frames per second? But is it worth adding those artifacts into the image? And some displays do a much better job at motion interpolation than others. The best thing you can do is find a scene with some motion with a lot of detail in it and see if that's something that you're going to like or not. Look for a scene that has a lot of vertical lines in it, a lot of yes. maybe diagonal lines in it, and it's moving. Yep. You know, whether it's a car driving yep. by, you can look at the grill of the car, or they're, they're panning across a cityscape. Because now you got lines yep. and, and, and bricks and all that stuff. And then, and then play with yep. the mode, just repeat that, until you find the one that makes it um, l smoother or less distorted. Right without adding artifacts. It's this fine thing. You want it to be smooth, but you don't want to add artifacts. So those types of things work we, good, cityscapes and stuff like that. But yeah, as you said, man, um, there's another scene, I can't remember what movie it is, but the camera's panning uh, right to left, and it's the Golden Gate Bridge. So there's all those lines that make up the bridge. And if the camera's panning, mm -hmm. and you see those lines wiggle and wave and do some nasty stuff, then you probably don't uh -huh. want to use the motion interpolation. Exactly. So. So like I said, we can, there's a million other things you can do. Like we're not going to get the sound right now because we don't have time. But there's one more thing that I want to talk about that's always a challenge too. Yeah. And that is um, HDR. You know, it, I yes. will tell you that we could do two and a half hours on HDR. But, it, but, the, but the process that we're talking about here kind of applies to HDR. First thing is you try to, if it has multiple HDR modes, you pick the best mode. That's adjustable, right? You adjust your brightness. You adjust, um, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times you can adjust contrast or they will have some sort of HDR level mode that you would pick that you could yeah. use to, to, um, to make sure that you maintain your, your highlights, right? And it's kind of this fine balance between um, highlights and, and, and frame brightness or picture brightness. A lot of times if the scene is really bright, they'll clip the highlights. And then if you want to preserve the highlights in a bright scene, the, scene, the overall it scene seems kind of dark. Or okay. when you watch a darker movie, Here's, you can't. the movie is just unwatchable. Where it gets tricky, Phil, is when you're trying to do HDR on a projector because, as we all know, projectors don't have the light output to track mm -hmm. HDR correctly. But there's really no standard on how a manufacturer should do their tone mapping. They do whatever they want. And some do a much better job than others. Mm -hmm. So the tone mapping conversation mm -hmm. is getting a little bit easier as the years progress. Uh, but it's still it's still mm -hmm. difficult um, it's still difficult in HDR uh, for a projector. Now the good news is you'll still get the wide color gamut and you'll still get the very saturated mm -hmm. colors when you watch like Planet Earth or something like that. You know you still want to make sure that the whites look gray and and some of these really basic things the skin tones still look okay. Mm -hmm. But but again I mean we can talk about it for hours. But um, it has so much mm -hmm. to do with screen size and room lighting. So HDR just gets a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. Uh, the screen in the room are important for everything, of course, but HDR just gets a little funky. But there's still plenty of things you can do to make it make it look really nice to you. Yeah, so just to keep it real simple, first thing, the things you're going to really notice, if colors are off, you're going to notice. Fix your colors. If you can't see details in the shadows, you're going to notice. Fix that. If it's dim, I don't care if you can't see everything, you're not going to like it, yeah. right? So the first thing is get your black levels right. Get your colors right and use the same process, brightness, yeah. um, contrast, and maybe their little HDR adjustment if it has it on the, on the projector. Mm -hmm. Adjust your color temperature, right? It's okay to give up some highlights sure. to have a better looking picture overall. Sure. Because are you really looking at that light? Oh, the light bulb in the far left corner of the screen. Yeah, right. I can't see the highlight detail. Who cares? Geeks like us who evaluate projectors and stuff like that. We'll talk about the fact that it's clipping highlights. For most customers, like you, you're not going to care, the average person, yeah. as long as the 90% of the picture looks good. 
then um, if you really want to geek out, that's where the professional calibration comes in. Um, but hopefully the projector has adjustments for HDR and yep. SDR. But sometimes if you make the SDR adjustments, they apply to the HDR sometimes and it looks perfect. Depends on the brand. Fun. Yep. So whether you're talking about audio or video, there's like four or five things you can do to make sure that the system is performing its absolute best without having to hire somebody like me to come in and spend six hours and charging you a lot of money. And that's really fun to do and it's really interesting and, and fascinating stuff. But you know, you might not have the budget for it and you might wanna get the big, most important things out of the way and just be happy with it from there. Nothing wrong with that. I'm never gonna get upset with somebody and tell them, oh, well, you didn't get it professionally calibrated, then it's not good enough. You know, we don't, we don't play that game here. If you get it pretty darn close and you're pretty darn happy with it, just enjoy the thing, man. This is supposed to be fun. We like to watch movies and TV shows and forget about the world for a little while. This is supposed to be a fun thing. So don't get too serious about it. You know, I, I always like to say, you know, um, you know, we're not saving lives here. We're just trying to make good pictures and good sound. Have fun. So, yeah. so Jason, I'd like to thank you for coming and, and talking, hanging out and talking to us about um, just basically little quick tips that you can do to improve yeah. your projector. Because a lot of times, Anytime. out of the box is not the best experience and you could always make it a little better with by spending a little bit of time so take care I'll, everyone I'll, I'll, and we will talk to you what are you gonna okay. say bye phil i was just gonna say right. you, you mentioned <laughs> sometimes out of the box and i'll push back on that and say never out of the box but that's all that's the man <laughs> never out of the box okay so take a little time calibrate your projector uh, or take a little time make adjustments to your projector and you'll be amazed at the better picture that you can create. All right, so take care and we will talk to you soon.